After watching Team USA's Olympic trials for the men's 400, I thought I was confident who was going to win at Paris, right? But I low-key forgot that there were other countries competing in the event as well. And they got some tough-ass athletes, actually. Like, deadass, it wasn't until I was editing this video that I realized that Christopher uh, Morales Williams, he's not even American, bro. He's Canadian. Before I had made this video, I had made a TikTok of my predictions. So if you haven't already, make sure you go check out my TikTok and fuck with it. I'm trying to get up to 10K. Alright, but enough with the shameless plug. Let's get into the video with my predictions. Alright, so while I was making the script, I realized that um, I low-key should add a little honorable mention. I was originally just going to do the top four, but and technically it's fourth place could be an honorable mention but that's not how i want to do the video so honorable mention for fifth place will be charles dobson so i'm still pretty new in like actually watching track but apparently he's pretty tough for britain like he play, he runs for their team and he's got a season best of 44 38 this season so he's been pretty consistent with his times considering he's only ran it three times with an average of 44 49 the main reason I don't really have them in the actual top four is just because these next four athletes just have faster times this season. And that's literally it. Like, he's consistently dropping times. It's just that they're not, that his, it's not close to these other athletes. And not to mention that all these other athletes, their times have been, most of them have been recent or they're just like leagues better than his, his times. Because Charles hasn't ran since the 10th of June. And, like, I know that the Olympics don't start until July 26. That's plenty of time for everybody to, like, be getting into their peak condition. But I just don't. I feel like by the time that time rolls around, he's just not going to have the times needed to place against any of these guys. This leads me up to the first guy on the list at fourth place for Paris. And low-key, this kind of hurts my soul to say this because I really fuck with bro. But I'm putting Michael Norman at getting fourth. Now, we all know how tough Michael Norman is. He's been pretty dominant in the 400 over the past few years. With his best time being 44-2-1 back in May. And that's a pretty decent time. But if you compare it to just the U.S. people who ran faster than that at the trials, that's, that's not good enough. And that's not even considering the other people who are above him in uh, the world rankings right now from other countries. Like... And some of them are, pro are on this list, actually. And it's not even that he's slow. Like, if I had made this video before watching the 400 meter finals at, tr at the trials, I would have had him top three for sure. Maybe even second place. But, because did you see the way he was making that 45-3 look easy in the prelims? Like, bro, I was like, oh, no, he got this with ease. But when I watched the final, it was like he got out hard like he usually does, but then... He was coming down the backstretch really aggressive. Like, he was catching a lot of staggers way quicker than, like, race pace would advise you to. And, like, by the 250 mark for real, he was literally, like, he had caught everybody. And then coming off the curve, he was ahead of everybody. And that's what you're supposed to do. But, like, he got out. He was too aggressive with it, if that makes sense. Because when he was coming down the, str the final street, he didn't have a, another gear to kick into for real like Quincy Hall did. Because Quincy Hall, that nigga hawked him down. And, like, I don't think he's going to make the same mistake that he did at the finals at Paris. But, like, I just don't feel like he's he can he's going to be able to run a fast enough time to place and, like, have a good strategy when he's running. And what I mean by that is, like, how he ran at the finals where he was pushing too hard down that backstretch. I feel like if he tries to run a fast, a super fast time like that, he's going to push too hard down the first half of the race, and then he's not going to have enough kick down the last straight to place. And Quincy and some other people on this list are going to surpass him at that point. So I think he'll run faster than he did at the finals. But yeah, like 44-1-5, something like that. I don't see him running no super. I don't see him running sub 44 and now this leads us to the top three finalists so with the bronze medalists i think it's going to be quincy hall this season he's been going off and he's in really good shape he clocked the time of 44 17 at the trials in the final and he's showing that he's peaking 
at a pretty good time right now. I hope he doesn't. Pe- I hope this isn't his peak. I hope like when he by the time he gets to Paris, he drops his time even more because every time he's ran this season, his times have dropped pretty consistently. So I don't think he's gonna drop his time super crazy by July. I don't even think it's gonna go down by a point one. I think it's gonna be like I think I did ask think he's gonna like hawk down Norman again and barely nudge him off from placing. So I think he's gonna get like 44, 13, 44, 12, something like that. Like and it's gonna be like 44, 13 point seven. Like it's gonna be close. But yeah, I think he'll nudge him off and get third place. Alright, so now for second place to get in the silver, I got Alexander Doom. He's one of the breakout stars this season. The Belgian sprinter stunned everyone with his 44-1-5 at the European Championships. And this time is actually pretty impressive. Because if y'all don't know, they had... He ran... He had to... I think I'm going to I think I'm a drop it a little lower than that. Like, I think he's going to break sub-44. I think he's going to run... Mm, I'll give him... I'll give him 43.96. Like, not a super, like, not super far from 44, but, like, a respectable drop and a new PR. I think, and if you, like, everybody knows Olympics are where you peak. So I feel like, yeah, he could definitely drop his time that much with the way he's improving at this crazy rate. And now this leads us to our final athlete. The person I think who was winning gold at Paris for the 400 meters is Matthew Hudson Smith. Earlier this year he clocked a crazy ass time of 4407, only being second in the world behind Christopher Morales Williams. So a lot of y'all actually might be wondering why I don't have Chris on this list considering he had the fastest time this year. And really the reason I'm saying that is because of consistency. So this season Matthew has consistently been dropping his times by decent amounts. And Chris, on the other hand, ever since he ran that record, he's been struggling to break 44-4. In fact, he hasn't even broke past 44-4 since getting this huge PR. And I will say, that's a hard, that's a crazy PR to try to match, especially after such a big-ass one like that. Like, that shit is crazy. But at the same time, Matt and Chris are not in the same circumstances. Like, Chris... He is a college sprinter, and we already know how Georgia be running niggas into the ground. So, like, he's going to get them. He's been getting the Matthew Bowling treatment and having to run, like, once a week. Yeah, that's you're cooking your legs. So, I don't expect him to be getting. But by next year, so this year, nah, I don't think he's going to get even top five. But next year, I definitely feel like he will be able to. Um, he won't run as many. I don't think. I hope he doesn't run as many uh, meets. But I think he'll he'll be up there for next year. But for now, nah. So of course I can't say with a hundred percent certainty that Matt's gonna go out there and run this time at Paris since he hasn't run a four hundred since this PR actually. But I'm pretty positive that he's been in the lab like every other athlete is for Paris, and he's gonna continue to be until it's time to go. So his consistency and his experience. I feel like that's going to give him an edge in this field. And I believe that he'll take the gold with the Olympic time of... Mm, I don't think he's going to go super crazy f- from um from the Belgian sprinter. But it's going to still be a sub 44. So I'm going to say 43. If I gave second place 96, I'm going to give him like... I'll give him 92. So 43.92, breaking the 44 second barrier and cementing his place in Olympic history. So those are my predictions for Paris. Obviously, all these times are hypothetical in my guesses, and I'm not even that experienced with watching track. So some of the more seasoned fans, they might have a better opinion than me. So if you don't agree with me, that's perfectly cool. But I want to know y'all predictions for uh, the 400 at Paris. Who y'all think's gonna win and what times y'all think they're gonna do. So make sure y'all post them shits at the comments.